Hey guys, so um, I noticed when I was in editing of this that I skipped an entire page. So I'm going to have an awkward transition that uh, is going to be in the car and then this kind of view with the yellow background in my office and then it's going to go back to the car because I just skipped that entire page. But I want to make sure that I'm putting out the exact words that are supposed to be put out together. So um, just as a little fair warning, it's going to be weird. <laughs> Forgive the... Uh, awkwardness I just don't have enough time to re-record it in one shot so take care hey guys so I got this on 610 in the morning it's called be at peace be at peace some of my faithful who are very obedient I have asked to stay for the upcoming events to lead they have willfully agreed they are obedient faithful but I need their maturity and leadership for the coming uprising and war they know who they are. They, there are other faithful who are surely mine, but they are not mature enough to lead. They do truly love me and will still receive my miracles and protections. These are all obedient faithful, but they will be here for the chaos to come pre-rapture. Only a select group of obedient faithful whose skills are needed for particular tasks will come at the time of the anointed. They will not go to Geboa, but to another place to train. They will return with the anointed and aid in the bringing in of the half-borns. There are yet others who are stubborn. They have faith and know me. They are careful to do most of what I ask, but they are stubborn and they want their will. Or they listen to man more than they listen to me. Others in this group once were deeply faithful, but have drifted off and are no longer in full obedience to me. These are faithful believers, but they are either not sanctified, holy, or righteous. Some lack the use of the Holy Spirit. They are not in full obedience. These are still mine. They do not lose their salvation. They will all awaken when their time comes and be used in various ways as the pressures of what is to come brings them back to me with their full heart and a willing heart of service. Church, I hear your questions. I hear your groanings to be done with this earth. You will be raptured. What challenges that are to come will not be overwhelming for most of you as long as you hold on to me. I tell of what is to come to bring ease to your anxieties. I do not ask any of you that truly believe to stay for what is to come in the time of wrath. Mine are not appointed to wrath. In your age, as life has been easy, it may feel that way. Like the challenges surely must be wrath. I assure you, the wrath will be much more intense. Also, by depending on me, what you shall go through will be easy if you allow me to carry you and do not aim at doing all things in your own power and wisdom. My wrath is not to be placed on mine. Each of these warnings and preparations for what are to come are to reassure you that you have not been left behind as they occur. Some near you in the times to come will indeed be saying that what you shall see is the great tribulation. This is not true. The great tribulation is meant for the wicked. The anxiety you show is due to a clear lack of faith. If you do not see what I say plainly, you are to ask of me. I hold the answers. Yet you worry and clamor along amongst one another. Some of you are embittered that you are not counted with the anointed. This is a small group of leaders. All have gone through a lifetime of difficulty beyond your scope of understanding. They have been sifted and measured in ways that you could not have handled previously. But now, now you are ready. You are ready to hold tight as the anointed have done for a lifetime. You are about to experience the deeper relationship available. You are about to learn what true, pure trust looks like and this comes with hearing my voice. If you are faithful and sanctified and holy and righteous, 
If you abstain from wickedness and evil ways and do not partake in the lusts of this world, this is excellent. Some of you do all of this, but still have weak faith. You do not fully believe I can do all I say. You with weaker faith will still be raptured. However, you will not be used as a willing vessel as those faithful that have offered themselves up to me in prayer because you do not believe. You must grow in your faith before you can lead others. Much like a small child should not be expected to raise their siblings, it is best to have a mature adult bring up the young ones in my father's ways. All of you who are faithful and counted as saved eternally will be used according to your maturity. Some will be my hands and feet. Others will be brought forward quickly in their faith as they see me provide impossible things on their behalf. None will be left behind with this wicked generation. However, all of you shall pray fervently for your spiritual preparation. You do not know the depths and methods the enemy will try to use against you. You have not been in the fight with enough depth to know this. You must all pray fervently for the lost to be rescued, to walk away from their sinfulness, to leave their carnal pursuits, to come humbly to my Father through me. What is to come will be less shocking for you because I have prepared you with information prior to it occurring. But for the world who is completely unaware of what is to come, what is to come will be shocking and difficult. You are to help them. Those immature in their faith without such warning could easily fall prey to being entrapped. We warn you to protect you because we love you. If you do not understand, go back and listen to all of the prophecies we have given to Julie. When you have a grasp of them, all the picture of what is to come will come into focus. My father pressed Julie. Yes, she is the one before you. He pressed her previously to do some deep studies to be available for this time on spiritual warfare and on sanctification. Why? To clarify for those who are unsure what this means, what has been given before and what is being given now clarify much of what you ask me in prayer. It is readily available for all those who seek it. These are to help you navigate what is to come. If you find yourself in confusion, ask me for clarity. If you cannot find clarity, you need to consider that you are not walking in holiness and are not sanctified. Be sure you are holy in my Father's eyes. Your generation has been taught wrongly that just doing the bare minimum and inviting me into your heart is the conclusion of the matter. That is the beginning of the matter. You are not in covenant if you are not sanctified. You cannot enter heaven if you are not sanctified. You cannot walk with me and walk with the world. You must choose. This is hard to understand in your times. Many pastors have gone away from my words and led their flocks away. Read my words in red. Read the New Testament. Do they agree with the modern pastor? No, they do not. Read my words and obey them, not man. Many pastors will lead their flocks to the false Messiah. It is essential you read my words and learn to hear my voice. It is essential that you obey the Holy Spirit's lead. Why? To avoid being deceived, the deception will be so well crafted that even some saints will be tempted to be led astray. You will see the false Messiah. You will not see the Antichrist if you are secure in me. No Christians that are sanctified will stay for the great tribulation. And the Antichrist does not arise until the great tribulation has begun after the worldwide rapture. Do not fear. Listen to all of the words spoken, not just one set. And this will become clear if you have my wisdom. The willing servant does as asked, regardless of the task. Remember my parable. The servants who multiply what they are given and those who bury and hide what they are given to manage. 
Do not be as those who bury. Be of the servants who are honored. To simply survive on this earth with the only aim of personal salvation is selfish and does not obey my words. I tell all who are mine to go and make disciples, to share of the good news and the hope of eternal salvation, to seek and save the lost, to save others from the pit of hell, to care for the needy. These are all physical and practical tasks that allow me to work through you in another's life. A good servant runs to the task with full exuberance. Being a Christian is not about doing the bare minimum. It is always about saying, yes, Lord, enjoy, and then asking, what else can I do for you, Lord? Why? Because you are a willing and humble servant and understand the gift you have been given is of such high value, you appreciate and willingly serve to help bring others to the same place. Only the prideful servant demands, only the ungrateful servant decides which tasks they are available to complete. All will be saved, all who are mine, but those with open hearts to be used in any way, those who desire to serve with a joyful heart, rewards beyond measure await. Choose today your response. Will you be used and honored? Or will you complain and try to tell the God of the universe how you believe things should go in your earthly wisdom? Time is short. Choose. You who complain, do you love me? Like, do you really love me enough to get out of your comfort zone? Choose. Although I hear complaints, although there are those who lack true love for me, although there are those that claim me but demand their way, I rejoice in the majority of you who have offered up yourself as a willing vessel. You have mentally prepared to serve me no matter the circumstances or timing. You have decided to follow me and help the kingdom. You who have decided that however and wherever the Lord wishes to use you, this is where you will cheerfully serve. I rejoice in you. You will be honored for your true love and commitment. You will be honored for your commitment to the kingdom. Some of you will go with the anointed. Some of you will stay to lead. Your sacrificial love, exchanging your desires for the mission will be rewarded. Regardless of the maturity of your heart, what is to come is brief. You will be raptured and taken home before the rise of the Antichrist if you are securely with me. All who follow the false Messiah are not fully mine. They will stay for the trials. Be fully mine. I wish none to suffer. Open your ears by reading my story in the Gospels and Acts. We keep saying read. Why? This is because we see. So many are not reading. They just listen to others. Read. If you are ready, excellent. You are appropriately preparing. You are obedient. This is essential for your soul. Continue on. Excellent. For all who call my name and cry out, I will help you. I will show you. I will help you through whatever lies before you. Be at peace. These times approach swiftly. True trust in me and my Father and our works on your behalf will be needed and provided. Do not be like Peter and while in the midst of a miracle begin to doubt. Trust. No, I can and will do it. Keep the end goal in mind. To awaken the sleepers, to bring in the half-borns, to bring in the first harvest before the rapture. Keep your eyes on me and you will be astonished at what you will see, Jesus. At this point, I was told to tell you uh, many of the miracles that have already happened to us so that you can understand some of the things that you could be expecting. Okay, so here's a testimony of God's faithfulness and a sample of some of the things he's done for us. I'm going to have to backtrack because not everyone has been with me since the beginning of this um, you know, YouTube channel. So we've had many miracles over the years. Um, we've had money just show up out of nowhere, like refunds, like we needed money ages ago when we were young married. 
Um, three out of the six members of our family have died and come back to life. Um, two of us, including myself, toured heaven, saw a lot of things, talked to God, all that kind of stuff. And then when we came back, we had a much deeper and more um, uh, visual understanding of what's going on in the spiritual world. So we can like see angels and, and things like that. Okay, so, but what I was specifically told to talk to you about um, happened um, starting April 1st and following, okay? So, um, last October, I had gone through an anointing that the Lord um, had me stay home for a week, and we went. I went through this whole process, and He gave me a, a, like a earth anointing, okay? So since then, I've had a lot more training in like higher level um, spiritual warfare and stuff like that. So um, you're going to see some of that reflected in here. Um, but let me just tell you what happened um, from April 1st and following. So April 1st, I had many dreams and visions about things to come. Um, that day, I had seen many um, of the fathers of the faith like uh, Abraham, Jacob, Noah, David, Deborah, Elisha, Elijah, Micah, etc. I've seen these before at different times, but they were all together at the same time and they were all looking down. And I was told that they are looking for our soon coming home. And then I heard music that was um, free at last, free at last. Thank you, Father, I'm free at last. Then there was this vision of me being picked up there was chaos going around and i just was picked up by an angel and taken out of it and off the earth okay so then april 2nd i was at disney and i was actually at epcot at disney and um i the lord has brought me there many times we have passes but the lord has brought me there many times this year because it's a target rich environment where I can learn a lot about spiritual things um, because most of the people there are not saved. So um, that particular day, he was teaching me um, different odors that different demons give off and then telling me the source of those, um, of what they control, what those demons control. So there's like different activities that might happen in the in the evil world but then there's like a head um demon that kind of controls like smaller issues okay so you'll see that reflected so i was walking past people as well as goods because some of the goods had these different odors on them and then people would obviously buy them take them home those demons come home with them so um what was happening is I was just being trained to identify like I would, someone would walk past me and I could smell the demon oppression on them and then the Lord would tell me what was going on what was you know happening so basically here's a couple examples so like a surfer has a like old rotting wood smell and um, that is the spirit of rebellion okay uh, there were some there were quite a few people with this like dark spicy smell and um, there were three different kind of people. There were people that were very overweight. There were people that um, had many, many, many bags of merchandise. And then there were very skinny people that were like showing off everything, you know, very tight clothing and um, very um, self-centered kind of attitudes. And um, what I was told with that is that th those people, those people are all oppressed by the spirit of covetousness which is the same as gluttony, so the heavier weight, and that comes in tandem with pride, which is interesting. Um, so the long, there's a really long list that I've been collecting and I'm still adding to it, so I can't really share it with everyone because I'm still adding to it, but um, I'm being trained for that because I think I'm gonna be doing things with that information after you know I leave, or maybe right before. Okay, so then on April 3rd, I was shown a caterpillar and then a butterfly. And then I um, heard this song from when my kids were young and it was um, Butterfly Fly Away. And then I was told, you've got your wings, you will skip the cocoon. So I knew that meant I'm not gonna go through the traditional process of dying. I'm going to go straight to 
the transitional body or the next, the transformed body. I'll be taken to heaven, given a transformed body. I'm going to skip that like death part where people, you know, die. Then on April 4th, I was told in the morning to study Jesus, Elijah, and Enoch's translation. So I was studying all of that and thinking it through. And I went to the pool, which is where I do a lot of processing, um, especially vacant in the mornings. And it's just kind of like a nice, calm, like waterfall sound. And I sit there and pray and the birds come hang out. And um, there were two morning doves that came to the pool, which I always appreciate because when the morning doves are around, usually very spiritual things occur. So um, they were there at the pool with me at the anointing in October and I see them all over town they're kind of like a symbol to me so um when I was in the hot tub I was I had my arms out of the hot tub and I was looking up into the sky and I was praying and all of a sudden I had this really unique um sensation and I just felt the Holy Spirit come on me but it was not the same as usual it was like very different so my arms started feeling a little funny and so I put them into the water. I, was, I put them in the water and the uh, feeling completely intensified and it was very specific but I'm going to hold off the details of that. I can't tell every detail of everything that's going to be happening because some of it needs to be um, private information because of the enemy. Okay, But when I had this experience this feeling started spreading around my body and I thought because it was extremely intense I thought at first oh my gosh am I gonna be translated like right now it was very intense and then I started having fatigue wherever the um, feeling started it started getting really fatigued and I thought you know I better get over to the chairs because my legs were starting to go into this same kind of feeling. And I thought, if I can't walk over there, I'm in trouble because no one's at the pool. So I walk over to the chairs and when I get there, my arms are completely fatigued and I sit down and my legs are going through the same process. My body's going through the same process. And as I look down, I notice my hands, which were like years younger. And I was like, what happened to my skin? What's going on? So I'm going to show you a picture right now of what my skin was looking like two days before when I was at Disney. I just happened to have a weird picture of my hand. It's not even the whole hand, but you can see the texture difference. And then here's my skin like seconds after I get out of this hot tub. And this skin has continually improved. So here's another picture of later down the road. Now, the same phenomenon happened to the skin on my face, so it's not just a hand thing. And this isn't like the best picture of me on the before, but if you zoom in here and see all of these fantastic wrinkles with my, you know, 50 something age, and then seconds later after this um, transformation, this is how my face looked. This is amazing. Like, who can believe this? In fact, I told a non-believer and showed them these pictures and they're like, how is this possible? That's not possible. You can't do that. Like they, they couldn't wrap their mind around that no, God can do anything. Anyway, I was praying and thanking God for the healing and I was asking what was going on and I was told that I needed to go through a process in order to be translated because it's not a natural process for the human body to go through. And my body, because it's been sifted so thoroughly <laughs> by Satan, is pretty messed up. So I have to go through more um, dramatic healings than some of the other people. Um, even when some of my team members asked, hey, how come I'm not going through this? What's going on? Um, I prayed about that. And the Lord said they're going through the same translation preparations. Their body's just not in as bad a shape and they're not going to be feeling it. So if you're anointed and you're not feeling anything, don't freak out, okay? Um, so anyway, that night I had to drive to go get my daughter at the theater and, um, she, and when I was driving, I took a deep breath, I was singing. I always sing worship. I put my top down and my windows down and everything and I just like blare Christian music and drive. 
and sing <laughs> and make the demons crazy in my town. So um, when I was doing that, I took a deep breath for this song that was kind of like, well, I haven't been able to sing with um, good volume since um, COVID. And before that, when I was 12, I had really bad lung damage from an illness. And so I've never had quite the same volume everyone else has had, even though I sang most of my life. The first third of my life, I was a singer. So, but I've never had that massive volume. Like, you know, my mic was turned up a little bit. So I built it out like, like I've never built it out before. I'm singing at the top of my lungs with full access to every piece of oxygen in my lungs. My lungs were completely healed. Like I was shocked out of my mind. It was amazing. So I'm just singing everything I can. Um, it was amazing. Like to take a deep breath and get air, that's amazing. So day after day, more and more things were happening. During that week, at night, one night, I um, felt someone touching me. It was my husband. It was an angel, and I could see vaguely. I could vaguely see him, but I could only. I could smell him more. So I can smell the angels. I can smell the demons. You know all that stuff, right? So I could smell him, and then I started feeling like a finger would be touched at different places. And as this was happening, it was actually an unusual sensation. And sometimes it would hurt a little bit if it was like where a broken bone was or where muscles had been um, kind of wasted from paralysis in the past. And um, my kidneys were healed. Um, anyway, in that process, then I heard, um, this is my healing breath in God's voice. And all of a sudden, this very cool, clean breath kind of like blew into my lungs. So I, when I took my, my next inhalation, it was like this very cool breath. And then it was like my whole body got super peaceful. And um, it was really amazing. Okay, so that's some of the healing. I can't get into everything. There's just so much like <sighs> my body's such a wreck. There's so much and I'm not done being healed. I was, I was being healed today as I was, you know, driving my husband and then driving home. I was being healed today. Like it has a specific feeling. Anyway, um, some of my team has also gone through some very unique situations. They're not feeling the healing like I am. Okay. Um, but I have, um, they have reported to me, one had their jaw and their ear completely healed. Um, one, one night this, one of my guys took a bath and when he got out, all of his age spots vanished, gone. Like he's a little older. He's got age spots. They're gone. Then a different day he went to sleep and when he woke up, he had moles and they were gone. Like zero. So then, um, I have one team member who she doesn't really feel like she's getting all this massive healing or anything, but I can see the shine in her skin. She's getting shinier and shinier. Her hair is getting like brighter and brighter and her skin looks younger and younger. And I know she's being changed. Two of my team members felt like they were being, um, levitated one in, in like a in bed and once like doing something else and they felt like their whole body was lifting like they were getting ready to lift off okay so a lot is going on with the people that I know and can confirm okay they're anointed okay then um, in my own family uh, I have one of my kids she was um, the youngest I had very high-risk pregnancies because of my health issues and um, she had, she's the one who had craniosynostosis and her um, skull was miraculously healed the day before we went to get the last MRI before the um, surgery for her brain and everything. And then she was completely, you know, like uh, mirac miraculously healed. So, but she always had one leg that turned a little bit, like it was twisted and um, her foot turned in, her whole leg was actually twisted. 
And um, after my healing started, all of a sudden she woke up one day and her leg was straight, perfectly straight. And she was like, well, that's weird, you know? <laughs> and then another one of my children, she um, lost her hearing at a young age, like very, you know, not completely gone, not deaf, doesn't need um, hearing pieces, but very diminished hearing, not very good. She, her music's always too loud because she, you know, needs it that loud to hear it. Um, and she also has not really great color differentiation in her eyes. She's legally blind and, um, her taste sense of taste is just the worst. Okay. Like she can hardly taste anything. So one day she wakes up and her hearing's back. She was like, Oh my gosh, everything's so loud. What's going on? Then another day she wakes up and all of a sudden she can taste food. She's like, wow, that's really sour or that's super sweet. How come there's so much sugar in this? You know, whatever. So, um, then this child with like legally blind, she wears glasses for correction, but like without them, if she can't drive because her peripheral vision is so bad that it's dangerous. Okay. Cause she cannot see. So she, um, one day was going to go do her makeup, took off her glasses, went to go do her makeup. And all of a sudden her eyes stayed 20, 20, like she was wearing glasses, but she had no glasses for a couple minutes. And then it reversed back to how, you know, blurry it is with, you know, bad vision. And then, um, one day she had someone come up next to her at the theater and it scared the heck out of her because she's used to having zero peripheral vision. And this person was like behind her and she could see them like she had peripheral vision. And then a second time she had her vision correct for like a minute. So we're pretty, I'm, I'm assuming this is preparing her. Hey, you're going to drop the glasses soon. Okay. Um, now those are like some of the physical transformations. Uh, my husband's had some things. There's lots of things going on. Those are the highlights. Okay. I'm telling you dozens more of things have happened. Okay. Now, Here's some other things that are going to be very practical, okay? Um, most of you have heard that we had power twice when the whole neighborhood did not, okay? Once was in a storm and once was um, the power being cut off by the um, construction. Well, this happened again and the construction people cut the line on accident and the power was out for eight hours. We had no idea. And there's not one stitch of energy coming into the entire neighborhood. Nobody in our specific neighborhood has generators. And three of us had our lights on. We had full use of power. We had no idea there was no power outage until the following day when all of the neighbors were complaining about it. And then we were like, oh, there's a power outage? <laughs> because the Lord just kept it on for us. This is what kind of miracles he can do for his own, okay? Okay, my daughter who works down at the Playhouse, she has some food allergies, not as bad as myself or my other daughter, but she has some food allergies. She has to have food she can have on the run because of the kind of work she does down there. I mean, she like does costumes and props and um, she's running around constantly. So she needs something she can eat on the fly. So she makes allergy-friendly homemade um, Chinese egg rolls, okay? And she takes them with her and she makes the same exact recipe every single day. And it makes four egg rolls. And all of a sudden, all these people were like, oh my gosh, those look really good. Can I try it? Can I try it? Can I try it? So she shares. And the next day they're like, oh, can you bring more? Because those are really good. So she decides she's going to go ahead and, you know, make some. And uh, she makes a double recipe, which should make eight, right? And all of a sudden it made 12 and she was like, that's weird. Okay. Well, you know, she didn't think much about it, but she was like, I think the Lord just like made more food for me, but I'm not sure about that. So another day she goes and it was like, um, a really long day and she had four with her and they asked her to stay for a second shift. So she didn't have enough food with her. Like she would take eight if she was going to be there for 10 hours or 12 hours. So she didn't have enough food with her and um, she went to the fridge after she had like one or two of them earlier in the morning and there should be two left and there were four in there. And she was like, four? I just ate two. 
So later in the day, she ate two more. So there's two left. She goes later and two more are in there. So there's four in there again. <laughs> a different day, she made eight because she thought she was going to be there all day. And she did not eat them all. And so she left four in the bag. And so she had eaten four. She left four in the bag and she left them at the fridge at the theater. She comes back and there were six. She was like, that's not possible. <laughs> So one day she takes only four and people want to have some, they're like asking her to share. So she's like, okay, you know, I can go without one or two. It's fine. You know, so she gives one to one of the guys and gives one to someone else. So she should have two left for herself. And she goes back in there later to eat them. And there were four and this just kept happening. So clearly food can be multiplied. And I asked, I'm like, is it, does it taste better? <laughs> tasted exactly like what she would make. It was nothing different, but it was definitely miraculous and definitely multiplying the food. Um, so then there's a situation with gasoline. Okay. I don't have any trouble buying gasoline. I don't have any trouble, uh, you know, paying for the gasoline. We don't have really trouble getting it here. It's, you know, right now it's just no big deal. However, I absolutely hate this one feature on my car which is when the gasoline is 50 miles left to drive. That's what it's, you know, they're like, you have 50 miles left to drive. You better go get some gas. Personally, I could go get gas at like, you know, 10 miles to go. I don't care, but this car cares. And so it flashes up across the entire screen. Oh my gosh, you're almost out of gas. You only have 50 miles to drive, you know, <laughs> and it covers up the speed you're going, it covers up everything else and it's super duper irritating. So the Lord knows I hate this function. So I usually fill up when I'm at half a tank because I just don't even want to deal with that thing. Well, for these particular weeks, I happen to be, this is during April as well. During these particular weeks, um, I was driving my husband to work and back and I was driving my daughter to the theater and back and I was in the car for like some days, four hours, some days, 10 hours, some days, 12 hours in the day, just constantly in the car driving, you know, different people, different directions and doing, you know, different things. And, um, I looked down for, I think I was doing that for about a month. And, um, so I looked down three times, three different weeks. And it said I was at, um, 99 miles. And I was like, oh, okay, 99 miles, great. I gotta get to a gas station before we get close to 50 miles left to go because then it's gonna do the freak out. So I um, decided that's cool. You know, as soon as I get home, I'll just go, you know, get it. And I just happened to notice it was 99 miles. And then it started dropping, 99, 92, you know, whatever, it's dropping down. And I dropped my husband off for work and I had to drive back. It's like 30 mile drive back. And, um, so I'm sitting there and I noticed that the gas tank is going up and the miles left are going up to like 125. What? What's going on? <laughs> it's like 20 miles for free. So I was like, okay, that's cool. That happened three times to me. And of course I just went and got gas like normal or whatever, but I didn't even have to think about, okay, are we going to get close to the 50 mile marker where it's going to freak out? The Lord was showing me that he can multiply gas. He can multiply food. He can multi he can fix the body. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, um, as far as protection, um, where my daughter works at the theater, it's in a historic part of town. It's also, um, just like, you know, a skip from the beach, like literally two miles from the beach. So it is not really the best area. There's a lot of homeless. There's a lot of drugs, you know, it's like, mm. and, um, so we had to do a lot of spiritual warfare. Um, when we first started driving there, praying, taking back the territory, it's very dark city where we live and very churchless. Like I think, uh, our pastor said it was something like 92% of people in our County, which is like 2 million people have never been in a church. I mean, it's very dark here. So 
in this process of driving back and forth and t praying over the territory and taking back territory, we started seeing angels. We started seeing the fight between the angels and demons. We started seeing all sorts of spiritual things happening until the areas that we're constantly in became settled and calm and um, very safe for us, okay? But before that was completed and we felt that kind of shift in the spiritual sense where it was much safer, um, the Lord has given me that opportunity to see angels and to smell angels and I know when they're around and I can feel them. They're kind of like this fuzzy, warm, wonderful thing. And um, every time I would sit in the parking lot waiting for her to be done, like 10, 11 o'clock at night, then, um, you know, I'm watching these people do drug deals. I'm watching all these drunks, you know, try to get to their car and all this stuff. And um, it was, I started having to fight in the spirit and pray over all these people, over all this stuff, okay? And I would see angels protect my vehicle, protect me from people. They would be heading straight at me. And I could see the demon on them, angry as heck, trying to come after me. And then my angels would just be like, eh, you ain't going there. And um, so there are certain angels, they have different um, smells and they're all wonderful, but the ones that smell particularly sweet, they seem to be protective of life. They seem to be the ones that defend from death, okay? So for three days in a row, I had this one particularly cotton candy um, angel, and it was with me in the car every time I was in that parking lot. It wasn't with me any other place, but in that parking lot for three days in a row it was with me in that thing. So the third day, um, it was especially spiritually dark. I had my entire team praying like it was... It was uh, oppressively dark, like it felt heavy and um, satanic, okay? And so I was praying while I was there, and uh, then we left. Uh, like It was like 10, 15 maybe. And she's almost always the last one out, but she wasn't that day. And we left, and then the following, that 15 minutes later, a man was violently murdered six feet from where we were. Now, I know because the Lord has told me that the evil one has marked a day that they want to kill me, but that he will not allow that to happen and that I will be off the earth before that happens. But they are always aiming at physically killing me. Like I need to go one more time, right? <laughs> like they're not learning. <laughs> but anyway, so... I'm always aware that these people, regardless of the fact that I could come back, <laughs> they're aiming at me because I'm a high target, okay? So I know that we were spared that night from violence because the cotton candy angel was with me, okay? Um, I've been given other skills and stuff to help defend with that, but I can't really talk about that. What I'm saying here is the things that God is saying in these messages to the faithful that he's going to provide and protect and you're going to have your lights and your gas and all the things you need. It's not a joke. It, it's not, he's not messing around. He's showing through my life already that this is real and this is how he provides. This is what he does. And, um, I mean, this is like literally if I was slicing bread, this would be like a quarter of an inch of all the things I've seen since April. Seriously. But what I'm saying to you is this is real. And those of us that have experienced this kind of stuff, you can't tell us otherwise. You can't be like, oh, that was probably because of whatever. I can see the angels and demons fighting. You can't tell me that. I know better. So at this point, I just pray to take down and disassemble their playgrounds constantly. When they kick me in the gut, I go, oh, you want to play that way? Okay. And then I start praying that more people come to Christ. And I start praying that their um, magicians are are dismantled in the brain. They can't function. I, I pray that they're taken down, that their stronghold on the area is taken down. I don't pray like, oh, save me. I pray, take them down. Because once they're under control, it doesn't matter. They're, take, they're out of control. 
that that bothers us but when they're in control because all of the power of heaven has brought all these angels to protect doesn't matter they can do anything they want it's not going to touch us because we are in the happy bubble <laughs> so join me in the happy bubble and be provided for get your faith on okay so look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they of course you are matthew 6 26 i hope this has been encouragement to you um and hope you have a great day